Okay guys, so now we're gonna show you uh, some Internet of Things applications of algorithms being deployed in production. This is related to some of the previous discussions we had on intelligent systems. But now, the name of the game, the frontier of analytics is moving out of the enterprise and into devices, where we're deploying algorithms into innovative devices such as this. This is called the Raspberry Pi, right? So for under $40, I have a full Linux computer right here, right? I have HDMI, I have Ethernet, I have USB ports, audio out. It's a beautiful little device. We're running Ubuntu Linux on it, and we're, we're, the name of the game for us is deploying algorithms on this to do particular use cases in the field. Here's another one that's quite popular called an Odroid. And then what we can do is basically take an inexpensive camera, for example, from machine vision use cases, uh, about $32 for this uh, high-def 1080p camera. This plugs right into the Raspberry Pi. And now we have a really inexpensive sensor to collect video data. All right? Now, a little bit, little bit of a diversion here. I want to give you a feeling of how we're getting inspired here as well. Uh, and again, science fiction comes up again. All right? So if you look at Star Trek, I'm a big Star Trek fan. If you look at Star Trek, everything in Star Trek is coming true. All right? It's kind of funny, but everything in Star Trek is coming true. For example, we talked about intelligence systems in the previous segment applied to the Enterprise. And what is the, the name of the ship in Star Trek? Enterprise. The Enterprise. <laughs> OK? It's such an appropriate name. All right, now look, at, now look at Star Trek. We've got computers. Check. We've got computers today. No problem. We've got communicators, telephone. Check. We've got that as well. What else is happening in Star Trek? What does Star Trek, what, is the, what does Enterprise do when she needs data from a remote location? What does she send out? Probes. Probes. <laughs> exactly. She sends out probes. And that's exactly what's happening here, okay? The Enterprise is sending out probes into the edge and collecting data. All right? And we're going to show you some use cases of that. And today, it's so reasonable to do. This is the Hadoop guys of the device world, these inexpensive devices. And a little bit more in detail on what's going on here. Back in the late 70s, we felt that the hobbyists were, were basically exploring computing, personal computing. And we saw where personal computing went. Okay? Now, right now, we're seeing magazines called Make, Maker Magazines, where people are exploring these devices. I'm showing you right here. This is Arduino, which we have right there, to create amazing devices, okay? smart devices. This is intelligent systems, guys, at the device world. And it's in the hobbyist stage right now. So that's what we know. It's very exciting. A lot of innovation is happening at the hardware level. Now at Moose Sigma, what we're doing is, again, leveraging our expertise to deploy algorithms onto these devices. And that's what we want to demonstrate to you now, a few of these ideas. Now, again, one more thing before we show you some demos. The ESP platform is based, because we base the real-time capabilities from robotics, leveraging this agent paradigm, guys, and it works very well for devices. So for example, we have this device here. We have an agent container just sitting on here, right? A blank container. Now these agents are mobile. We can actually send them, the enterprise server, to the device to execute the algorithms. So again, it's a very elegant paradigm using that agent metaphor derived from robotics, which are already in essentially devices, leveraging the same paradigm to create enterprise intelligent systems and device intelligent systems. Just want to make sure you guys are aware of that really elegant uh, design point that we have here at Moose Sigma. OK, so let's show for you the first demo here. This is Garev. He's my assistant. We're going to then read using a, a camera from what I just showed you and using the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is right here calculating. We're going to look at his face. He'll be here over in a moment here. It says face detected. OK? We're going to calculate his pulse rate, his blood flow, by using a, an inexpensive camera and algorithms. OK? Algorithms. I will explain a little bit about what's happening as this is working. What we're doing is we're watching his face with this camera, and we're looking at every pixel over time. Right? That creates what's called a, uh, and there you can see the, being shown you here. That creates a cross-sectional time series data set, also called panel data. And you'll see here, what we'll do is anytime there's movement, we will basically amplify it. And the movement amplified will basically be run into a spectral technique called spectral analysis. And then we will then calculate the frequency. It'll be running again here in a moment, so you can see that. From that frequency jump, we're able to calculate his pulse rate. In essence, what's going on, guys, is his face is pulsating as blood is flowing through his face. And from that pulsation, we're able to detect it with a video camera and then plot it here. So it takes a couple of seconds here to process, and then we'll see, uh, we'll see the calculation here. Here's, a, again, the camera, inexpensive camera. That's okay, that's okay. Connected to the Raspberry Pi. 
And what we're going to be doing here is looking at a shelf. This is a retail shelf. And the, the use case is real simple, but the math and the, and the algorithms are quite complex. What we want to be able to do is, for each shelf, we want to simply know what percentage of the shelf is occupied. Right? We call this OSA for short, on-shelf sh on space availability. Okay? So we'll, give you, we'll demonstrate that for you right now. So over here, uh, you will see a picture um, with respect to what we're about to show you here. You'll see on the left-hand side is a true picture. On the right-hand side is a computed picture. We have pie charts. Uh, they basically reflect the size and the amount of the, uh, of the amount of the inventory that's left. So let's show you here. You can see if this works pretty well. We take off some chocos, some Kellogg chocos. And if you look over here, you see that it detects uh, that those chocos were removed and a pie chart is updated to tell you that's how much shelf space has been consumed. Now for a retailer, this is quite uh, valuable because today, They'll actually send people to go calculate this, or they will invest in expensive scales to calculate the, the inventory that's, that's left. But now we can use inexpensive cameras and inexpensive compute devices powered by algorithms and machine vision algorithms to do these calculations for you. Now, as you can see, as we bring it back, uh, put it back, um, you know, they'll come back and you see the pie chart going back to 100%. Okay? So that's a, a retail use case of machine vision. OK, so what we're going to demonstrate now is machine vision applied to drones. So the drones, basically to us and with Sigma, we feel this is a data collection device. This is essentially what, how we're thinking of it. Um, and so we want to get some good practice with respect to deploying algorithms using our enterprise signaling platform into the drone and doing machine vision. So we what we have here is a standard Parrot drone. It has a 720p camera right here. Okay? We, and what we're going to do is we do something called drone wars. All right? So what we've done is we put some algorithms inside the drone to be able to follow uh, the front of this particular Nerf toy gun. All right? And my objective is to shoot the drone. Okay? And that's what we call a drone wars. Now what it's going to try to do is evade the shots. All right? And this is all real-time uh, machine learning, real-time machine vision, powered by Hadoop clusters, transmitting the data to Hadoop, crunching the data, and then showing you uh, the actual visuals over here, as well as controlling the drone via Wi-Fi. All right? So the first step is called calibration. And we're going to run that step right now. It'll calibrate the drone, and then we'll do the actual drone wars demonstration. OK, so let's start the drone wars. So the, the drone is going to use machine vision algorithms to target my gun and try to evade. So Simon, tell me when I'm ready. Give me a countdown. Go. Hey. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. I'm out of ammo. Three, two, one, boom. <laughs> Drone wars. Okay, guys, we call this Robodoro. This is our, a robot in arena inside the IND lab. Now, what we're showing you here is a simple, well, not simple, a complex task of robot navigation. Uh, it's going to try to find its target. In real time, we have a camera up here. And we're basically using some machine vision algorithms and some path algorithms uh, in real time, powered by Hadoop. We've hacked this uh, Lego Mindstorms, and we put Java on the controller. And you can see it's finding the target. Now, we can move the target also in real time. And the path will automatically, naturally follow, based on, also based on the constraints here. Now let me make, put it over here a little bit, and let me kind of give you uh, uh, an explanation of why we're doing this. Okay? So why we're studying robotics, guys, is because the software abstraction inside robotics. Um, real-time analytics, real-time algorithms, the robotics industry, the robotics and academia are doing it really, really well. So we wanted to learn from them. So our ESP platform is based on the agent metaphor, which comes from the robotics discipline. And that's why we're really set up nicely for deploying intelligent systems inside of enterprises and inside of devices. Because of the innovation, because of the inspiration we're getting from our Robodoro exercises in IND. So this is our IND robotic arena.